Are you appointed by God? If the answer is no, I'm not appointed by God, then thank you very much. I don't want to hear about it because you don't have the right to talk in the name of God. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, you're tuned in to Where is God Today? Mm -hmm. I'm here with my brother Jamil. Thanks for having me. God bless you for joining me. Oh, yeah. Um, before we do start, you are watching us live on the Mehdi Appeared TV. Uh, there are a couple of phone numbers on the screen. If you are tuning live, or if you are tuning in live, uh, please feel free to call. Um, we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, other than that, uh, before we do start anything, uh, we've mentioned this book several times before, The Goal of the Wise. It is available online for free. Uh, it's available in over, well, at the moment, 11 languages with more still to come. And uh, we have a, a QR code on the screen for the book, but we have an announcement to make. Yesterday, we had the launch of, or the release of um, a new book. This is the Manifesto of the Mehdi, entitled The Mehdi's Manifesto. Mm -hmm. And it is available online, and uh, you will be hearing a lot more about it on this channel. We plan to discuss the manifesto over the, not this week coming, but the week after. So tune in, not... <laughs> today is Sunday, so tune in next Sunday for us to tell you a little bit about the manifesto. In today's episode, which is the third part uh, on the, the Vatican, the Catholic Church, and the Pope, we ask the question, are they worth trusting? Are they trustworthy? Can we actually trust them? Right? So... Without, without any further delay, let's get into it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so over the last two episodes, we've looked at where this organization came from, how it's evolved, and uh, we've, we've basically shown um, that you can't really believe, like rationally or with any form of sanity, that this institution and those who represent it are actually from God. So, today we aim to talk about the position of the Pope, the actual leader, and um, how this, like I don't actually know where to begin, it's this, this much insanity. I mean, okay, so the very first individual to represent uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, was Peter. And uh, the Roman Catholic Church will tell you that the, ver the very first Pope was actually Peter, um, who basically got his authority from Jesus, peace be upon them both. Now, it's from that point on that we have questions about. Um, in particular, after the establishment of uh, the Council of Nicaea, as we've discussed before, and how the canonization of the Bible went on and how you eventually had this sovereign state being established with the Pope as the head of state. Now, that evolution <laughs> and that development didn't, come peacefully or in a divine manner, let's put it. So, um, yeah, if we go back in history, we're at the moment we're on Pope number 266, and that's Pope Francis. The Pope before him was Pope Benedict, and the one before him was John Paul II. Now... <laughs> For as long as I can remember, I definitely do associate them with one scandal or another. 
the most prominent scandal, as we've covered in the last couple of, well, the last episode anyway, um, the most prominent form of scandal was the sex, sex with minors or, um, yeah, the sex-related scandals, which were appalling. And um, what we see today, Pope Francis, um, he's, he's addressed the issue, but hasn't really done anything about it. He's discussed it in the press, but he's not really done anything substantial to actually mitigate or minimize this kind of thing from, or stop it from happening altogether, right? Now, as a person who represents God, supposedly, you would expect more from him. You would, you would actually, at the very least, expect him to imprison people who are associated with such despicable acts. Now, what do you think of that? Like, do you think that, you would, well, would you first of all expect more from someone like that? Or, like, <laughs> do you think this is how it should be? Or, yeah, you know what I mean? I think, I think you can look at it, or we can look at it from two different pers uh, perspectives because, Obviously, I guess we're, we've been looking into these popes, we've been looking mm. into the history of the popes and the Vatican and the city of the, the Vatican, and uh, we kind of know better. So on that hand, for people like us who are, I guess, you know, aware of all these scandals and the history, and mm. when you put it all together as like a package, you, I can't say that I expect better. Right. But if you're someone that actually follows them, these people, and you revere them, you're part of this Catholic Church movement, this religion, mm -hmm. then I think, yeah, you would expect better. You would... Yeah. The you scandals would better, you would want better, yeah. you would think that this wouldn't actually be happening, you wouldn't expect this to be happening, and I think you'd want to believe what the narrative that they're pushing that it's actually a lie, it's just you know, they're targeting us, it's a lot of you know, like uh, yeah. um. You know when they when they talk down smearing, about your yeah, thing, smear, smear, yeah, smear, smearing. yeah, smearing and and uh, and this kind of stuff. I think right. you'd want to believe that because it's hard to accept that right. your whole history of papacy and you know the people that you think you're following uh, are full of these hor horrific sex scandals, money laundering, murder. Right. Um, not to mention things like the Crusades and the Spanish Inquisition. I think a lot of the time people like 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 to forget about this kind of stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. I think people do want to give them the benefit of the yeah. doubt. They want to like protect them. They mm -hmm. want to only speak positively about them if they do believe in them. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, when you look at it objectively, you can't. Thank it's you. very I difficult to yeah. to ignore a lot of these these uh, well, atrocities. Looking at things objectively is how you're supposed to be in the first place. Yeah. You shouldn't ever... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, turning something divine. You shouldn't, like, you shouldn't look at deify something. Deify it. Deify something or... Yeah, mm -hmm. you shouldn't, like, turn something holy if it's not. You mm -hmm. know, like, you should always have this... I wouldn't say sceptical, but real outlook on things. Mm -hmm. Objective, yeah, as you put it before, like you know. This, yeah. um, so, essentially, what we're saying is, you, you like you shouldn't glorify something before you actually investigate it and understand it for what it is. If it deserves glorification at that point, yeah, fair enough. But if not, then don't kid yourself. Yeah. Anyway. I, think, I think it's funny as well just to add to that, because if you are a person of religion, if you have read your own religious books, uh, you'll see a lot of the time in the Bible, the Quran, I'm sure the Old Testament as well, places yeah. where it says, you know, like basically look into your own religion, you know, yeah, or, or places where it says, you know, we follow our forefathers and we'll just stick to what they were upon. And yeah. then obviously, you know, they were upon misguidance or they were worshipping idols, but they don't actually take what I think is a big thing and we've all done, just take religion into our own hands and go forward and sort of read the research and scrutinise and take it objectively and have everything on the pa uh, table and think, actually, A, B and C, yeah, that... that Makes sense. Makes sense. You yeah. know, whatever this person has told yeah. me, this person has told me, I see it all here. I'm a human being with a mind. God created me sort of equal to every other person. So I'm sure I can make up a decision for myself. Well, and not blindly that's... follow these, like we keep mentioning, these wolves in sheep's clothing. Yeah, like, well, I was going to add to what you just said. Mm. Like, basically, God gave you a brain for a reason. Yeah. God gave you this, like, intellect, yeah. level of intellect for a reason. He gave you the ability to reason and sort of 
assess things exactly. for a reason, right? Like it's not just there for the sake of it. Exactly. And if you're not using it, as you've said before in a previous episode, mm -hmm. then why even be a human being in the first place? Yeah. So um, on that basis, mm -hmm. yeah, like you, it's your obligation towards God at the very least to investigate who you're believing in and mm -hmm. who you're following as representatives of God to make sure that just in case you're wrong, that you can actually say to God, okay, you know, like I followed them for X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And if you were wrong, then you can correct that and say, look, you know, I didn't know, but yeah. now I do. So, you know what I mean? Like you can't like face God at the end and go, yeah, I believed in this person. And then he'll, be, he'll show you like what was exactly. wrong with that person. And then... Exactly. You're, you'll be you'll be asked why you placed your hereafter in the hands of those who you weren't sure of. Exactly, and you'll be questioned. You know I mean? Only really how to account for your own self. Exactly. You can't, I can't blame. Oh, you know, I just listened to sermon. I can't. I can't say that on a judgment Absolutely, day. Absolutely. Exactly. Say, well, why did you listen to sermon when I gave you a brain? And right. The, what are you going to say then? Yeah, you know, like the, the like God's like if I was in God's position, yeah. I'd be like, right. So sermon thought for you. Exactly. So you might as well have not had a brain in the first place. Exactly. You know, you depended on someone entirely on that level so what's the point exactly so like your parents always say to you gonna, mm. if your friend tells you jump off the bridge you're gonna, you, are you going to follow <laughs> yeah. anyway yeah. Um, yeah so um, I guess that addresses that mm -hmm. now um, we have in like the previous episode mentioned one of the popes mm -hmm. who for me was a disgrace yeah um, Pope Bonif Bonifaci yeah the, yeah the eighth what yeah <laughs> Um, this guy tried to justify the act of paedophilia mm -hmm. or being with a child in a sexual manner, which is ridiculous. Um, but there's much worse. There are there like we did also cover in the previous episode the selling of letters. Yeah. Uh, this was a decision that one of the popes made. Which mm -hmm. pope was it? Do you remember? We'll get into it now. I think that leads us nicely into this uh, what little segment we can call the top five crazy popes. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, this was fun reading. Exactly. It's not in uh, any particular order, but it's just five popes that yeah. highlight the history of uh, the papacy and popes that we feel you know deserve a special recognition yeah, for, for their service for their, to, for to their, God. Yeah. <laughs> God with huge speech yeah, marks, exactly. by the way. But, so, yeah. as you mentioned, Pope Boniface, let's get into him first. Um, Very good. He is the first slide as well. Um, it says, I read out some key points and we'll have a little discussion about it. So, um, he has an aut autocratic papacy, which means Boniface, the, uh, Boniface the Eighth, was known for his aggressive and authorita authoritarian style and frequent conflicts. The very disturbing quote we mentioned. He's basically a dictator. Is exactly, what exactly. Right? Uh, the very di uh, disturbing quote we mentioned yesterday is he reportedly dismissed paedophilia and said it's nothing more problematic than rubbing one's hands against the other. Um, we mentioned it yesterday, the destruction of Palestrina. Um, Bonifaci destroyed the city of Palestrina over a personal feud, um, wiping out you know thousands of people just in, in the city over something, you know, as, he had uh, a personal yeah. problem with someone exactly. and decided, I'm just going to wipe out your whole town. Exactly. Uh, he had That's a big... dictatorial, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> he had a big feud with the French king, King Philip IV, hmm. um, issuing the papal bull, uh, I think it's pronounced Unum Sanctum, um, asserting the papal supremacy, which actually led him to be uh, captured and humiliated. Um, he is mentioned in, uh, you know, some historic literature, uh, Dante's Inferno, in which in which the poet actually condemned him in the eighth circle of hell, giving him his own so special place in, lowest, in hell. Yeah, exactly. Um, hell. And just generally, his 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 legacy of conflict um, revolves around his stubbornness and self aggrandizement. Self -aggrandizement. That's yeah, basically self praise, basically. Yeah, which which obviously included him in you know erecting a lot of statues of himself, leaving. <laughs> at yeah, like that, exactly. that, like that description there. I'm sorry, but that kind of reminds me of Saddam Hussein. Yeah, <laughs> um, a very, very well-known dictator of recent years who had a legacy of torturing people, killing people, wiping out a whole village with um, chemical warfare or chemical weapons. Um, like we're talking about the Kurds. Like this is very well known. It's documented. You can all look at it. Look up Halabja. Um, and uh, he had statues of himself everywhere, p 
paintings and pictures of himself everywhere. He really, really, really self-aggrandized. He basically um, saw himself as a war hero and a, you know, essentially he was, he, he put himself in the position of utter glory. Like, Iraq was basically his kingdom. But that's uh, another subject altogether. But this Pope does kind of mm -hmm. remind me of that. And yeah. it's a bit shocking that he's actually got the title Pope, yeah. head of the church, the Roman Catholic Church. Exactly. What years was he around? So he was around from uh, 1235 to 1303. Okay, uh, I don't so know exactly how long he was in office, but right. yeah, he, yeah, he lived the... This is around the end of the Crusades, right? Yeah, around that period. kind of time. Yeah. Okay, so he was basically a, we call him a dictator. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, a dictator of um, religions. <laughs> anyway, next we have which Pope? Uh, pope Benedict the Ninth. Mm. So which uh, years was he in? So he's from. He lived from twelve, from ten twelve to ten sixty five. Okay. Uh, AD, and he was known as one of the youngest popes. He came became the pope at the age of about twenty, mm. uh, making him one of the youngest popes in history. Uh, again, very corrupt, very immoral. His papacy was marked by extreme corruption, debauchery, and accusations of immoral behaviour, including orgies and a lot of violent outbursts, as we've seen before. Okay. Um, this one, <laughs> this he has something special, which I don't think many other popes did, if if any. Um, he actually sold the papacy. <laughs> Benedict the Ninth wow. was notorious for selling the pap uh, the papal throne for a large sum of money to his godfather Pope Gregory uh, in t 1045. Uh, he had multiple terms because of how much they sort of protested against him and all of the scandals and stuff. Uh, upon selling the throne, he gets his uh, papacy. Uh, reinstated not once but twice but actually three times um, amid all of the chaos and political um, intrigue and you know oh, calamity wow. during his, his reign. Uh, again leaving a disgraced race considered one of the most corrupt popes in history and his uh, reign contributed to a deep division within the church and damaged his reputation during that era. Now um, like just to comment on that guy um, if he's willing to sell the papacy as in like he's willing to sell, sell the position of pope I don't see him coming to be a pope in a sort of legitimate manner not at all you know what I mean like it's obviously it goes hand in hand right yeah. if he's willing to to accept you know, money for that position, then yeah. he must have paid someone to get in that position. Yeah, yeah, right? you see, you see, um, there's examples that we'll get into in a bit Later, where people yeah. have bought their, uh, bought their papacy, or have had a lot of uh, cr uh, criminal <laughs> and political um, influence and has like basically pushed their way into papacy. Um, but what's interesting is that we've highlighted this pretty much in every episode is that God is the one who appoints the ruler. Right. Uh, that is... You know, selling selling the rulership is not God appointing. Like it's not well. It's right. Okay, so to have the audacity, even if it was like a, a, a sort of divine appointment, yeah. right? To have the audacity to actually go out and sell it, right? That's saying I'm selling God. Yeah. Like as in I'm selling out God. I don't care. Yeah. I just want to benefit myself. Now, for a person with that kind of like self appointment or self kind of like basically to have that level of authority and to then just so do, off. yeah like just for self gain just for some kind of like um, monetary or wealth based gain I mean mm -hmm. that's worse than Judas because like at least Judas hung himself <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like, I yeah. mean, That's, I guess what do you say? Yeah. I mean, you <laughs> can't mad, say anything. Right? I mean, I think for me, this is a proof that, you know, after Peter, there was no one divinely appointed by God. I mean, the, the acts that they're committing. In that, in that organization. And uh, sure. I mean, this is a thousand years later. So, <laughs> I mean, for sure, if if even this, the first yeah. Pope after Peter wasn't appointed, then this goes to show why these people like Pope Benedict. Yeah, and, they definitely and these don't, guys, deserve exactly, don't deserve respect. Act right? the way they do, because right. they obviously are not divinely appointed. And this is mm. what we're trying to highlight by going through these five crazy Popes, is because we just yeah. want to emphasize the fact that this is what 
what happens when God doesn't appoint your leader. Absolutely. You get people yeah. like this yeah. over you <laughs> and like your sell it. Pedophile. Exactly. And someone willing to sell, like, like, like if he's selling that, imagine like, or, or would he not hesitate to sell you? Exactly. And what's crazy is after he sells it, he gets it back two more times. You know, it's not even like that's the end of his reign. Like he gets, oh, wow. his, he gets the throne back. Wait, wait, wait I forgot then, this part. He yeah. sold it to his godfather. Yeah, his godfather. He kept it in the family. This is the, the, these, a lot of these. That's nepotism right yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of these uh, pops come man. from like big criminal God, sort man. of mafia style mob tied families. Right. That's nuts. And uh, that's, that's why they nuts. have such inf- uh, you know uh, financial, political uh, uh, influence and authority in, in the regions. Mm. And this is why, you know, you said that I wonder how many keep people the actually know about this. You know? I mean, I'm not an expert, and it's yeah, not hard to find. Always. So I think if you're looking, you'll find it. Yeah. But again, if you're turning a blind eye because you love your religion, or you th- you know you think religion is something great, and you don't look into it, then you're easily misled. Which is absolutely and that's one of the these problem, tricks of these uh, wolves in sheep's clothing. Let's go to the next one then. Let's exactly. hit that. So this one again, another young pope. Um, this is John the Twelfth, um, and uh, we actually titled it John the Twelfth and the Papal. Pornocracy, um, because of how uh, illicit his reign was. Uh, he's the youngest pope, and John the Twelfth became pope at around eighteen years old, chosen primarily for his noble family connections. Wow! Chosen for his noble family yeah, connections. That's the other thing. Yeah, like not divinely these, appointed. Most of these pope positions are elected. They're like you know, they, obviously they're nominated and then chosen by a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, let's go to that guy again. So then he's again, like I said, chosen for his noble family connections, not appointed by God, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, scandalous behavior. His papacy was notorious for scandal, including accusations of adultery, fornication, and even turning the Lateran Palace into a brothel. No um, he's an alleged criminal act. He was accused of murder, blinding opponents, invoking pagan gods during his papal, papal reign. Um, his papacy was marked by constant political conflict, especially with the Holy Roman ep- Emperor Otto I, who he, cr- who he crowned but then later betrayed. So he, he crowned this uh, emperor and then obviously mm. betrayed him later. Uh, he died a violent death under, you know, in quotation marks, mysterious and violent circumstances. <laughs> Um, allegedly killed by a jealous husband in the midst of an affair, uh, further cementing his disgraceful wow. legacy. Wow. <laughs> um, all I'm going to say to that is that's two popes we've mentioned there who basically have a reputation for sexual deviance. Mm-hmm. Um, one was involved in orgies and the other one turned a supposedly holy building into a brothel. Yeah. Um, and not only that, but was killed over an affair, sexual mm-hmm. affair, with someone married. Now, isn't that ironic? Don't you think that's a bit crazy? Yeah. You know, like... I mean, it fits the bill, you know, you, <laughs> he, he came into power and went out of the power the same way. Right, right. That's nuts, man. Yeah. Like, literally, like, I honestly don't know how crazy this institution can be if it's led by people on that level of... Morality, let's say. So, who's next? Pope Alexander VI. So, he was born to the Rodrigo Borgia uh, family, which is infamous for its, his uh, for using his papacy to enrich his family and secure mm. powerful positions for his children. Right. Um, nepotism. He, exactly, nepotism. So, he had a scandalous lifestyle. He openly acknowledged his children, including Caesar and Lucrezia Borgia, and lived a life of excess with numerous mistresses and lavish parties slash orgies. Um, this is an interesting <laughs> point because three. I want to I want to talk about this in a little bit. It's uh, simony. Um, Alexander was accused of simony, gaining the papacy through bribes and selling church offices to the highest bidders. Um, Unbelievable. Uh, Borgia family infamy. His children, especially Caesar, were involved in ruthless power struggles, assassinations, political manipulations throughout Italy, uh, conflict with the. Uh, Savono, Savonala, Savonola. Uh, Alexander clashed with the fiery Dominican preacher um, who denounced his corruption. He excommunicated, excommunicated this priest and then later execu- uh, executed him. So, again, a uh, legacy of moral decline. Uh, his papacy was widely seen as a period of moral decay in the Catholic Church, contributing to uh, uh, the Church's eventual reformation. Um, so yeah. we're talking about, like, this was Pope Alexander the, what, the sixth? Yeah, Pope Alexander the sixth. Okay, so 
another pope who had a reputation for sexual deviance, um, another pope who was involved in bribery, another pope who was um, quite ruthless and um, very, very sort of nepotistic. He also had his own children. <laughs> yeah. well, that's a bit nuts, isn't it? Like, I mean, how, I, how, how sort of hypocr like it's very hypocritical for this organisation to prevent priests from having kids. Yeah. But then the popes quite happily going out and yeah, there's there's lots affairs. of stories of these popes having. Uh, uh, extramarital affairs um, mm -hmm. resulting in you, what we you put quotation on it, bastard children. Yeah. Um, because they are meant to take a vow of celibacy, I believe. I'm not a exactly. super expert, that's, but yeah. I mean, I think that's a, a, a thing. So, um, unbelievable. It just goes to show, like, the amount of hypocrisy and um, use of this religious influence and power to yeah, get to for, for personal self, gain yeah, and personal literally, um, literally, glorification. Um, and one thing I want to mention is this, this word simony. It comes from actually Simon the Magician or Simon the Magus, mm. um, who was another opponent to Simon Peter. Um, Unreal. <laughs> and and he uh, the reason why they, they coined it this word after him is because he came to Peter and tried to buy his way uh, into sort of like apostlehood, saying like basically if if I give you because he was a rich man if I can pay you you can basically enforce me with the Holy Spirit and say like you know allow me to go do miracles and proclaim more about himself because he wow. he was wow. a, a magician at the time and wow. was sort of you know wanted his own following and. Uh, again, a lot of similarities with the, these popes that we see here. Mm -hmm. um, Do we have one more, so, or yeah. is, is that us? Okay, um, well, these are four examples of the popes that... Yeah. Like, I honestly don't know what to say to that. I think it's pretty cheeky, really, for um, an institution that was run by such corrupt individuals mm -hmm. to call itself divine, to call itself holy, and to call itself, well, well declare itself uh, the foremost uh, representative of God on earth. Yeah. That's just, like, beyond... It's beyond, beyond any sort of reasoning. It's beyond any, like, honestly, how can they actually face God? Mm -hmm. I don't think their God is actually the God, the almighty God of Jesus. I don't think that's the truth. I think their real God is someone a little bit more demonic, someone who tried to corrupt Jesus because they followed in his footsteps, where Jesus, peace be upon him, was approached by Satan himself and offered the world. He was, uh, he was in, he, like, he did offer him all the kingdoms on earth, right? Yeah, yeah. There's the, the story of Jesus where he's on the, the mountaintop yeah. and part of his sort of journey in isolation and Jesus, uh, the devil comes to him because obviously we know that, you yeah. know, God gave him respite and yeah. allowed him to still have power over the, over the over kingdom of earth. Mm. And he tempted him with multiple things until he says, basically, just do this one thing and I'll give you everything. Yeah, he and told him to uh, jump, didn't exactly, he? exactly. Just well, worship there, him. There was, yeah, there was, there was two incidences. Yeah. There was a jump incident, but there was the other incident where he actually said to him, "Just worship me, mm -hmm. prostrate to me, and I'll give you all the whole world." Exactly. He tried to take him off the path, and uh, now Jesus resisted. That's the most important thing, right? Yeah. He, he, not he, only did he resist, he like dismissed yeah, him completely. Exactly. And then he went about his life in the most uh, how humble are these way. People, how are these people on the same level as Jesus? How? On like, in what universe are they representatives of Jesus? And from what I understand, the position of the Pope is supposed to be the modern day, as in like whenever they, whenever you look at them, they're the contemporary um, sort of. Mm -hmm. They're the contemporary reflection or a, like um, equal of Jesus, right? Now, if that's the case, how do you explain all this behavior? Absolutely. You I know? think it's, it's disgusting, actually, to, to be wrong. like the head of the, the Pope and the religion of Jesus. And I think it's reflected in sort of their history and their mm -hmm. wealth because this is obviously not a testament to Jesus and how they lived. And what exactly. this is a reflection of, though, is 
is the people that oppose Jesus, <laughs> the people that want to have these rich and lavish lifestyles well, and live on all of these things that Jesus, you know, I guess forbade. What, but instead, they, they, uh, they, uh, instead they you know, chose to kill him, chose to free Barabbas yeah. and live the way that they wanted. So, of course, they're happy with people that reflect that, that the things that they want. want yeah. They want to have these lavish orgies. They want to have a wealth of riches. They want right. to sort of have all the power and financial, uh, you know, capabilities. Yeah. Uh, and this is not what Jesus preached, nor did they offer him or give him. Right. Um, in terms of the power, and because uh, he came to rule, they never allowed him to rule. Yeah. Um, but instead, they wanted to rule, and they wanted also with their rulership all the things that you know come with this this worldly and demonic life. The one thing I'll, I'll say that's mm -hmm. in addition to what you're saying. Um, okay, so as I've said before, the Pope is the head of the Vatican or Vatican City, which is its own sovereignty. Mm -hmm. The Pope is seen as a head of state. He's the head of the Roman Catholic Church. He's the head of the Vatican. Um, he is um, seen as essentially a king on his own little kingdom. So with that in mind, right, all, the, all these actions, um, as we've pointed out, are not the actions of someone noble, not the actions of someone holy but they are the actions of somebody who is um, self-obsessed, mm -hmm. someone who is looking to have authority over others without answering to that authority themselves. Meaning, I'll apply these rules to all of you, mm -hmm. but those rules do not apply to me. So, we did mention previously that Jesus, peace be upon him, had this parlay or, or interaction with a very wealthy man who came and asked Jesus to join his caravan. He basically said, look, I want to be part of your caravan. What do I do? How do I become one of you? And Jesus' reply was, peace be upon him, go sell all your wealth, go give it away to the poor, and then come and join us. And that man got disheartened and walked away and never came back. Then Jesus, peace be upon him, said, it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. So, with that interaction in mind, right, how can you then legitimately expect these individuals who are wealth obsessed, who are mm -hmm. you know self obsessed, who are looking for that complete authority over others, but won't account the, you know won't hold themselves to account. How can you expect them to be anything like Jesus, peace be upon him, or eat like in my head? I just see them as that rich man who walked yeah. away but then took away what Jesus had, peace be upon him, exactly. had and used it for even more personal exactly that. power and gain and exactly so on, that. you know what I mean? And it just reminds me of Pope Leo, who's another, I've got a couple of honorable mentions in this in this line <laughs> of crazy popes. Um, pope Leo is the one that was selling, you know, these pardons. And oh these, God, these, you know, that's uh, one of the funniest things yeah. I've ever heard in my life. So he, he uh, came from, again, a very rich and powerful family in hmm. Italy, Rome. Uh, he was famous for you know all of the Renaissance arts artworks what we mentioned yesterday uh, loves a bit of gambling and indulging That's in the finer things in life mm -hmm. and then um, when he sort of ran the Vatican's wealth into like the red zone he started issuing these pardons these you know paper pardons uh, so scheme. basically gambled away some of the wealth exactly. of, the, of the Roman Catholic Church and all of it pretty much all of it and then decided okay how am I going to save this sat with a whole bunch of people and yeah. then came up with this idea let's sell pardons yeah. Self forgiveness, let's uh, pay for penance. Like, you, you basically, you out there, if you've sinned, right, send us some money and we'll send you a letter yeah. which basically forgives you, um, and and uh, like of all your sins, mm -hmm. and that now makes us even more. I mean, come on, that's a laughing stock, yeah. And I mean, it gets it worse, really is. not only are they prying pry on people's like, you know. Insecurities. Insecurities, but they're also going deeper level because they also 
one of the things you could pay for was to get like a, a, a dead relative out of purgatory. Oh so like God. that's how depraved oh, they were wow. in that time. And this is why <laughs> Martin Luther was the, one of the big things that he he had a, 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 a problem was was this you know pay for penance scheme and you know buying forgiveness and buying. So all it turns out, out. Mar- Martin Luther was yeah. So yeah. Martin Luther had a conscience and still didn't, does, exactly. didn't like. This corruption, did he? Exactly. That's amazing. And he, and but at the, the same that, time, he, Martin Luther is the one that had the ninety-five theses and is mm. the is like sort of the architect for the great uh, Catholic and Protestant um, divide. Okay, so basically, so that's where that came from. Protestantism exists because of Martin Luther, mm-hmm. and it was a re- an act of rebellion against mm. these corrupt. Um, popes, these yeah. these evil. I'm I'm gonna call them evil. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think you can because, like, I mean, these are not the actions of someone who's good. At you all. know, it's actually mental. But there we go. Mm-hmm. So, um, right, we've now gone through a few popes, and yeah. we've gone through you know a little history um, of obviously the organization they represent and so on. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> we essentially have here an institution run by individuals who literally have, as you said, no authority from God, mm-hmm. no appointment from God. Exactly. That's one. And and they've <laughs> they've basically taken that power that they've given themselves yeah. and used it to manipulate millions of people around the world. They've terminated millions of people throughout time Mm -hmm. because they held on to something which went against what they taught. Yeah. And we've ended up where we are today. And where we are today is, as we've said, this sovereign state, Mm -hmm. which is very wealthy, very uh, wealth-driven. I remember, I think we were discussing this, um, they sell tickets for tours. Yeah. The cheapest ticket I could find, right, to su- to tour St. Peter's Basilica yeah. was 19 euros. Now, they tour, like, they, they literally take in millions of people yeah. per annum and tour them around, you know, yeah. their properties, yeah. right? So, there's there's... The money from the tours, one of the more expensive tickets I saw where you've got like, you know, um, a um, an audio uh, tour and so on with the actual physical tour um, was around 80 euros. So let's go to, let's say the cheapest ticket. Let's mm-hmm. say if there was, I don't know, say 5 million, do you think 5 million people would visit? The, the Saint, like Saint, like there's no numbers, by the way. Mm. We looked, I looked very hard. There's no numbers showing how many people tour the 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 Saint Peter's Basilica alone. Forget everything else, just Saint Peter's Basilica. There's no numbers showing how many people visit that place every year. Yeah. So, I think there's a reason for that. And um, if we were to conservatively say um, up to five million people visit it per year. That means they, they, just from that one entity, they're taking in roughly around... 9,500 million, uh, right? No, no yes, yeah, about n- almost 100 million, yeah, yeah. right? Right. Now, here's the thing, right? The Vatican is its own sovereign state, which means it, they won't pay any tax. Um, that money will go to paying their own expenses and so on. Mm-hmm. But, we don't know any financial sort yeah. of accounts. We don't know any financial figures from anywhere. Um, all we hear <laughs> are little uh, scandalous stories that come out every now and again where somebody's like leaked stuff. In fact, I wanted to mention this. There is a um, there is an entity known as VatiLeaks, like Vatican leaks. Um, so basically. A lot of information that's not supposed to be public knowledge comes out through this about the Vatican. Yeah. And um, their financial figures are, no, are unknown. We don't know how much money they take in per annum from all their different sites around the world. Uh, we don't know how much money they're spending on ridiculous things like the... the um, 
like obviously the commissioning of cars, the commissioning of um, robes, the commissioning of artwork. Like we showed that image last week. Yeah. Um, sorry, not last week. Days um, on uh, like in part two, we showed yeah. the image. Oh my God! This really sinister image of Jesus, peace be upon him, supposedly um, at his resurrection, um, behind was it Pope Benedict? Yeah, Pope Benedict. And it's unbelievably dark, mm -hmm. unbelievably dark, very demonic. And God knows how much that cost because it's a very big, well, it looked like a sculpture to me. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very detailed. And um, I have no doubt that it will have taken a very long time to make. So where's that money going? What are they doing with it? And how can they justify being representatives of God or even Jesus, peace be upon him, as they do, when Jesus spoke about giving everything to the poor. Exactly. How? Like, it doesn't make any rational sense. So, in answer, let's get back to our main question. Yeah. Can we trust? Absolutely not. Not since Simon Peter, in my very... Humble opinion, I think of the three episodes we've put Definitely. together so far, we've showed the history of the Vatican and how it came about, all the wars, all the crusades, all the Spanish Inquisition, all of that dark history. We've highlighted some popes, and these are just a handful of popes. You can search online, type, you know, top five, top ten, top eight, uh, you know, worst popes, and you'll find a bunch of other different names, and they're all, uh, you know, there or thereabouts. Dark with stories. Dark stories, scandals, sexual yeah. immorality, murder, bribery, simony, and <laughs> Nepotism, like you name it, they've done it. They really are. For me, if I look at it objectively, I can't, I can't distinguish them from anything different from like a mafia or a mob, to to you know, corrupt uh, individuals. Uh, corrupt individuals. Basically. That's what they are. There's no difference yeah. for, uh, between that group Immoral and this group. Immoral corrupt individuals. Exactly. I agree with that 100. percent Like um, we have basically um, their current pope, yeah. Pope Francis. As I said right at the start, this man has apparently publicly condemned the sexual deviance, the sexual activity of certain members of the church. But that's it. <laughs> He's yeah. not done anything. He's promised that he was going to act. But that was, what, five years ago? Yeah, five years ago. It's really just like a PR stunt. It's like, hey... Essentially, It's like, it's right? like a, a bit of reverse psychology because there's a lot of rumours for, like, almost 100 years now <laughs> saying, you know, all of this sexual immorality yeah. and, you know, uh, rapes of nuns and paedophilia, etc., that the Vatican and, the, you know, this uh, the Catholic um, Pope and, you know, cardinals, etc., have been um, accused of. So he's like... Okay, we've been denying it for lots of time. Let's actually admit to it and say we're going to do something about it, right. and then just keep quiet. Yeah, but, that's but exactly what the, happened. The, like, there's the other thing which, we, like, I pointed out in the last episode, which was um, every time something like this comes up again in the press, all of a sudden you see a flood of stories coming out around the same time that distract from that scandal story. Yeah. Right. So in this. In like in the last week or so, we've had like a story come up, and within literally days, we've we've had like we've had stories about the Pope speaking in uh, or getting involved in the um, election in America. Um, we've had him talking about reducing the deficit. Um, we've had him basically, essentially distracting, right? And those stories. Like, those stories are everywhere, but the one story about the scandal is, like, essentially buried amongst it all. Yeah. So you really have to look to find it. Exactly. So, I what think, can I, I think say? that's important. I think that's what we you know, encourage the viewers to do, is go and look and find yeah, research, please. who you're following in your religion, because, yeah, exactly. you know, your, exactly. your, your salvation will rely upon that. Yeah, like, your, your religion's in your hands, your fate's in your hands. Okay, so, um, yeah, Roman Catholic Church, the Vatican, the Pope, not acceptable, definitely not with God, and if God is with those, with those institutions or that position and that person, then it's not a very good God. But um, anyway, that's our conclusion, and uh, we urge you to investigate, check us out online, and uh, thank you again for tuning in, God bless you all, and have a wonderful evening.
Are you appointed by God? If the answer is no, I'm not appointed by God, then thank you very much. I don't want to hear about it because you don't have the right to talk in the name of God.